Hi everybody, Jill here. Welcome to Jill and Beauty Therapy. We are having a wig chat today. We're taking a look at Dalgona 16. It's a heat friendly fiber and it's by Beltress. We're taking a look at it in the real popular Butterbeer Blonde today. So yes, this one's been out for a little bit and I have been dying to take a look at it, really get a close look. I'm gonna let you guys know really how it's feeling, the way I feel about the fibers, just the whole deep dive into this one. I wanna find out what is making this so popular. Before we move on and learn more about Dalgona here, if you haven't subscribed, I sure hope you'll consider to do so and hit that bell. It's gonna let you know the very second I upload something new to my channel. And if you find yourself enjoying this, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Now, well, let's continue. So I really made it a mission this summer to get to know the line Beltress a little more and to experiment with more of their styles. You know, I have come to really love and appreciate Beltress. So I really just wanna give you just an all over view as to what my experiences have been with my Beltress wigs. I've had a few of them for a little while now. I acquired them sort of in spring and been living with them for a bit. So we are going to touch on that in this wig chat as well. Before I slip this on, in my last wig chat, I was talking about my absolute favorite wig grip. <laughs> took me a bit to get that out. And I happened to not have it right with me at that point. But I do this time and I just, this one needs to be washed and I'm about ready to buy another one because this has become my new go-to when I do wear wig grips. It's not my preferred way to wear my wigs. If I really feel like I'm gonna be wearing it most of the day, I will wear It Stays and do what I did back here, which is just a low ponytail that I clipped up. And then I will do it stays long kind of the perimeter and up in here. And that is the most comfortable way for me and the most secure way uh, for me to wear my wigs. If I'm doing just a wig chat or I don't know if I feel like I'm going to be doing one thing outside of the house, a quick run and then coming back home and just I'm not in the mood to really wear helper hair at home, then no, I will wear a wig grip. These by far for me are so much more comfortable. I the reason one of the reasons why I don't like wearing wig grips is it's a bulky feeling. It's one more thing I'm wearing and I want to make my wig experience as comfortable as possible. And because I am super sensitive to everything, you know, that I just want to eliminate as much as I can underneath that wig and yet still hopefully, you know, be comfortable. This has allowed me to do that and yet still have the security of having a wig grip. I can't go out of the house without some other way to secure my wig other than the little, you know, I'm not one of those that can put my wig on and adjust the straps and go out the door. I just don't have that perfect head shape for that. So I have to wear something, be it it stays or a wig grip. I love that it tapers in the back here and it is adjustable because this slow taper means that by the time it gets to here, it starts tapering, which means I'm really not gonna feel it behind my ear at all. And when it gets back here, it just sits under my ponytail and I don't feel it. The other wig grips are the same width all the way around. They bunch up behind my ear, as do my wigs anyway, because of my measurement, you know, my head measurement kind of, usually they will always bunch up behind my ear and I have to kind of make sure they're pulled away. So I don't want my wig grip scrunching up behind my ear either. And then when it gets back here, it's sitting under my ponytail and then I get my wig on everything. I just feel it. I can feel it when I'm looking up, turning around. It's just very bulky. This has been wonderful. So if these are the things that, if this is resonating with you and why you would like to wear wig grip, but they are just not working for you, you may want to give this a try. I will put the link to this. It's already in my absolute favorite stuff in my Amazon shop. You can find it there under the wig accessories tab and I have it there. I'm going to be ordering a new one just because over time, they do sort of stretch out and even if I've, I've been noticing that I have it now on the setting that it's just not going to go any smaller because over time they do stretch out they lose their really great 
qualities that you want them for. So they don't last forever, but I can say I've had this for probably, what has it been now, a year and a half maybe? And so it's well worth the investment for me. So I just wanted to show you this because the last video I did not have it handy. So, so I'm gonna be sprinkling little tidbits of my experiences with Beltress and what I have learned so far when I decided to really sort of get to know the line a little better. The first thing I can say is that for the most part, these have been super easy wears. I think it has a lot to do with the ones that I've chosen. They're usually that really sort of shattered way, very wispy. And it, it I don't know, they're fun because I can put certain accessories in them and make them look cute and take my time in that sense when I'm, you know, in the mood to do that. Or they just look so dang cute, they don't really take a lot of time before I'm ready to go out the door. So I'm just gonna do a spoiler, I guess, in the very beginning here, in that the Beltress wigs that at least I have experienced have been wonderful. They've been some of my favorites that I've tried this spring and summer. And I am so, so happy that I decided to really kind of get to know the line a little better. I think Beltress is one of the best brands when it comes to staying on trend. You get a Beltress wig on and you feel like you're a part of that, you know, because sometimes, and I've touched on this before, sometimes being a wig wearer, it's like we shouldn't have to then tap out on what's, what's trendy when it comes to hairstyles. And no matter how old you are, you shouldn't have to do that. We all want, we all want the sense of realism. That's a no-brainer. When we get a wig on, we want that sense of realism. And what you learn as you become a wig wearer is you sort of start learning what takes to get there. What are the features that it's gonna take in a wig to bring that home, to bring that realism? So it's more than one thing. It's more than just the style. It's the fiber. It's the type of fiber. And of course, the cap features are absolutely key. And a wig or a brand can have all of those features, but if they're not done well, it's a moot point. So lace fronts, some sort of monofilament on the top, all of those things are going to bring home that realism to your piece. And then there's comfort, which can trump all of that. So that would be very, very individual, and you will decide throughout your journey and learn what those features are that really bring you the best comfort and experience in that category, and nobody else really. I mean, we can all agree on a lot of things, but you would be surprised how one person really chooses this feature but can drop this one and be great, whereas someone else is like, oh gosh, no, I can't do that, but I can do without this. So it is very individual, and I certainly could never, you know, I get a lot, probably one of the top questions that I get on my channel is people wanting me to recommend either a first topper, and they give me all their criteria, or their first wig, and they give me all the criteria that they think they want. I can never, ever do that. That's too big a responsibility for me. It's your money. I don't want to spend it and then choose everything or a lot of things or even just one thing that makes a big difference that just wouldn't work for you. Unfortunately, it is a journey and you're going to learn along the way. Yes, it is an expensive lesson sometimes to learn but you just don't know until you try. And okay, so I'm gonna move my mirror just a little closer, always hoping that I am not kind of blocking things. So this has a pretty in there crisscross part. These can be really stubborn to deal with. So sometimes, you know, for the sake of just getting over it quickly when I record, I will decide to part it somewhere else because these kind that are really small little weaves, they can take a while to work their way out. So, but I'm gonna try because I kind of like where it is right now. And um, it's funny though, because they will just magically go right back to that crisscross part. <laughs> Eventually they stop doing that, but 
yeah, you think you got it out and then you're playing with it and it just magically went right back. So this does have monofilament, but it's only a left side part, but that's okay because some monofilament in my mind is better than no monofilament. <laughs> And it's not the most generous part either, I will say that. So you kind of have to stay pretty much in that area. But I would say the one thing, and it really is kind of just this one thing that I wish that they would improve on, is to not have so many fibers here. You know, I want to see the monofilament because that gives me that part like, look that 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 realism of having a part they they really put too many fibers in their monofilament area um and so it's too dense and when i part it i have a hard time even seeing the monofilament which would be my scalp you know so i've talked about that many times usually almost every time i do a beltress wig is uh that that is my only complaint i wish they would improve on that so you know we're paying a little extra to have monofilament even if it's just a little bit uh, and i want to take advantage of that feature and i feel like i can't because it's just too dense in there so that is uh, really my only gripe this is a very light very ashy blonde so if you're wanting a little warmth to your blonde this would be too ashy i think for you but if you're looking for truly an ashy light blonde then butterbeer blonde would be your choice this isn't the only ashy blonde in the line though which is really nice because some of you out there have a hard time finding ashy blondes they're either too yellow they're either too warm and if you're really looking for them there may be one choice in a brand i feel like beltress has a couple they have uh they just added what is it called root beer float blonde that one looks even more ashy than this one however with me saying that i shouldn't say that because i have not seen it like actually in person but um, there is a couple different ones mm -hmm. this is what i love about my experience so far with beltress is it doesn't take much at all and it's just ready to go not a lot of fussing at all um it looks like i probably spent a good hour hour and a half doing this to get my hair to do this and i just put it on and tried to get this part out the best i could and uh just fluffed up you know didn't even go crazy with fluffing it up and doing anything I'm going to give a spin first, though, before we do anything else. This is really, really pretty. And again, talk about being on trend. Let's get these fibers though off the cap. I think you could get a lot of body. You could have a lot of fullness with this style, I'm thinking. There is, oh yeah, wow, what beautiful. Jeez, oh. Now, there is, there is permatease in this wig. There's permatease, because uh, this is a left to, to right side part, and so there's permatease all along the side of that monofilament. You can feel it in there. Uh, there's a little permatease here in the crown behind that monofilament, and just the tiniest bit on the opposite end as well. So the permatease just sort of lays around that monofilament, also in the back there. Um, yeah, there, there's a little permatease really along all the wefts. It's not really bad. 
it's not super wooly or anything like that. I actually like that because I'm a styler. I love to style my pieces in all kinds of different ways, how my mood will suit me that day. So you know what that does is like even if you, which is going to be fabulous with this one, I can tell. But you know, even if you are wanting to put this back and yet we know we don't have any monofilament. So what that little bit of like permatees does along those wefts is it hides the wefts. So you're not staring at a weft if you are, you know, deciding to kind of like put it back. You know, this is a weft right here, but with the rooting and that sort of bit of the permatees on those wefts, it really hides them. And that is really nice. The thing also that Bill Trust does really great is I don't know if you noticed when I was showing cap features, if I've shown them already, they sew fibers right along the edge there of the temple tabs, those ear tabs. And so what that does is that these, these fibers are just looking like they're coming right out of the side of your head without having the lace there. So it kind of hides where my natural hairline, where I would feel the need to do little fill-in powder, I find I, I, I don't have to. The other thing that Bell Trust, um, wow, they just nail is the rooting. It's always very soft, no matter how dark that actual root color is, because they weave in those lighter colors all the way down there. So it's a very gentle transition. And then along the hairline, I've noticed there's those lighter fibers. Raquel Welch does that as well. But what they do, though, is they have weaved in some of these darker fibers all the way down into that ear tab so i'm seeing you know some of those low lights kind of around my face so we don't have all that light because that can actually wash me out because i am quite fair so i do like that i'm seeing some low lights right here along the hairline so i am i'm having a little bit of those flyaways and every wig has them some worse than others i haven't worn this one enough to know if it's going to be one of those or not but i'm really excited to just kind of uh try styling this a little bit so let me get a few little accessories and i will be right back i'm gonna do just a really simple Kind of go-to thing that I like to do. Um, I'm gonna get a little more. I'll be careful here. All right, so I'm gonna, I have these, I have a jillion of these. These are little tiny cheap plastic ponytail things. These are a one and done thing. Once you use them, you can't reuse them. They tend to break, but they're great for styling. I have little tiny cuticle scissors that I use and to carefully cut them out. So, you know, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to take a section and I'm going to put one of these in here. And I don't really have to worry about it being super tight. So I'm only going to go around just a couple times. So I'm going to tighten it and then I'm going to bring it through the back. And then I'm going to tighten it again. You could. So you could you could do that. This is a great sort of trick to do if you have a full monofilament. There's no place to secure a little clip, and sometimes it'll just float up there, and it it just doesn't look right. 
Also, using little rubber bands like this and trying to get creative is another great thing to do no matter what style you're trying to achieve with hand-tied caps because once again, there's no wefts to really clip anything into. And hand-tied caps can be hard when it comes to people like me that like to style and put clips in and do different things. So I have been experimenting a lot with these little guys to sort of give me other options, especially when I'm working on the crown, because there's really not a lot that you can secure to safely in there. You know, you don't want to risk doing something awful to your lacing or to the monofilament up there. The other thing is this is definitely long enough to do kind of a half up, half down, my goodness. I'm seeing some good wedding material here, you know, whether you're the one getting married or you're just going to a wedding or you're in a wedding. Um, I can see a lot of gorgeous stuff going on here with this. So let's take a look and see. I mean, that's effortless, right? Just gonna do my best to, to make this look nice. Again, you know, I'm just gonna grab this. This is one of the bigger ones that I have, but I'm just gonna put this in here and see if it looks okay. I am gonna want a little poof right there though, so let me see what I can do about that. Um, just, you, before you go out the door, you're gonna wanna check and make absolutely sure that you don't have wefts blaring at you. That would be a given. So there are wefts back here, but I've just been being really careful not to stretch any. I don't want to, I want to bring the, the barrette to a weft that will work, not bring the weft to the barrette, if that helps to make sense of anything. Okay, so then maybe I'll kind of do that. That's really a soft look. No idea what it's doing back here, not a clue. So of course, I would be doing this in front of a mirror and I would be looking and looking and looking. So please know that whatever it is doing back there, disregard if it's a mess because I would make it look nice back there. <laughs> Well, I do have a little something going on right there, don't I? <laughs> okay, let's just take a look. definitely long enough to do that if nothing else you can see that little 90s poof that's that's also a go-to for me <laughs> and I, I don't know I just I like doing that all right I'm gonna wrap this one up this is the gorgeous Dalgona by Beltress this is the 16 inch the HF in that style stands for heat friendly and it's in the color butterbeer blonde Thank you so much for hanging out today with me. I hope you learned a little something maybe you didn't know or you're just one step closer in finding your next wig or maybe even your first one. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>